Today I'm here with Crystal. Crystal, how old are you? 27. How long have you been using blues and how long have you been homeless? Um, blues, two years on and off and about a year and a half homeless. How'd you get started with blues two years ago? Um, honestly, it was just a friend I had met at a bar. Um, she needed help. She had a daughter and she, and she said she was going to go pick up some money. So I gave her a ride and while she was in my car, she just lit up a blue in the back seat and it was an awful smell. I remember telling her like, what the hell are you doing? She was like, oh, it's just because I have insomnia and some And a um, little while after I had went to like, my husband had beat me once he went to jail and I had got depressed. She had came over and pretty much told me if I needed something to take off the ease. I was even scared of marijuana, so I was kind of iffy about it. But I did it. I tried it and then like, didn't try it. She gave me like five of them. They were in my car for a while. Two weeks later, I tried it again and then it just progressively just got up there. And before I knew it, I was stuck on them. Do you have any kids, Crystal? Yeah, four. And where are your children at right now? They're with my ex-husband. When was the last time you saw them? Um, about a year and a half ago. Do you yeah. miss them? I had, yeah, I had got clean. I was going to NA and AA and all that um, for eight months, but he still wouldn't let me see him. Um, he had just told me he was gonna make it like my life miserable and living hell if I left him. And since I did, he hasn't let me see my kids anymore. It was, that's just kind of. Why stop? Because either way, I don't have my kids, so it's something kind of numbing. So you were clean for about eight months, and what would you say triggered you to go back? Um, him taking me to court without me really knowing. He really didn't tell me anything, and um, he pretty much had his new girlfriend kind of like adopt and take my rights away. And when I found out that my rights were getting severed and stuff, I kind of just didn't really care after that once I got the papers that it was severed. It was like, they took my kids, so there was no really, re it was kind of like my kind of suicide try. I had wrote a note and left it at the park across the street on the bench and had tried to commit suicide. And got right back on them. I did like 20 of them that night and just crushed them and tried to snort them all, but it really didn't do much. I came out of the hospital and just kept on doing them. Do you think you'll ever go back to treatment again? Um, I just got married like two months ago and I've told my husband that if he's not on by the end of this year with me that I'm just, I heard that in Arizona there's a way to get your rights back after being severed or something like when my friends were telling me something about that. I told him if he's not on boat with me by the end of this year to get clean and go to a treatment center that it's just going to get divorced because by the end of the year I'm going to figure out how to get them back. I see kids at the park all the time and it's just hard. What's the youngest you've seen out here on the streets? Um, youngest were probably 11 and 12 year old sisters that I had to take care of for like a month. Uh, um, I had bumped into them on 51st and McDowell and it was pretty surprising because they looked so small. And they told me that their mom had ran off with some dude and kind of they were feeding for themselves for the last two days and so I just took them under my wing until it just got too hard so I had to call CPS to pick them up. So as a mom, it sounds like you love your kids and you're trying to get them back, you know, it looks like you're coming up with a plan by the end of the year to go get them back, right? Yeah. Um, so, and seeing those sisters, right, 11 and 12 uh, recently, what do you think's going on in society uh, here in Phoenix in different areas? Uh, what what do you think's happening with this epidemic of blues, fentanyl? From your perspective, is it getting worse? Is it getting better? What's happening? Um, I think probably just um, the families now aren't they weren't really ready for the fentanyl to hit because I feel like a lot of families don't know how to. I mean, help their children probably. Like I've seen a lot of children leave their homes. Just today there was two um, people here looking for their children that they couldn't find them and were asking for them. And it's sad because I recognized both of the, the people that they were looking for and I told them like what area they're in. But um, both of the parents, they were crying and looking for their kids. And I feel 
like if parents knew how to approach the situation a little more then they'd know how to help their kids a little bit more like um i was adopted because i had drug like drug addict parents when i was three years old i lived in this park with my parents until i got adopted and my grandma just steer way far from drugs and by the time i fell into them she really didn't know what to do she just remembered my mom and dad and it was just too much for her to handle so she just i kind of just left the house by myself because i didn't really like her seeing me that way either because i knew it hurt her i don't know it just sucks i wish like if more people were educated how to help their children or ways to help them and a lot less kids would be out here even young adults Crystal, um, you mentioned that you were adopted because your parents were drug addicts and you're in the park that your parents had you in when you were three years old, right? In the mm -hmm. same situation. So do you see it as a cycle? It's like my biological mom, I know her now and stuff, but um, she like, she literally does blues with me. So it's not really like when I went over for help, she just really asked me for blues too. And I was just kind of surprised. But I mean, for her, it's always been men over her kids. Like she's so dependent on a man taking care of her, she really doesn't pay attention to us. I remember I ran over there time and time that I was just sick and I needed help, and she just closed the door. She doesn't know what to do to help me, because she's still back and forth on drugs. So I guess that's what they showed me when I was young, and I tried to steer away from it most of my life. But then after a while, like when I started drugs, I noticed why they did it, because it kind of numbs your feelings. And are you a little scared for the future of your children? Yeah, that's why, um, like, just how the world is changing so much, it's kind of scary. And just, like, a week ago, we watched the policeman gun down some guy back here. Like, it's just scared what the world is coming to. Like, I wonder what kind of world my kids are going to live in when they're adults or what they're going to go through. I, I am not, like, I'm kind of glad I went through this just because I know what like once I do get sober if hopefully God never puts it in my way but if one of my kids ever do I'll be able to know what to do to help them at least like I'll have the experience hopefully but I pray not the best way to help your children is to help yourself right now right yeah so you mentioned you you're trying to you want them back and mm -hmm. you're giving yourself until the end of the year so it's never you should start right now start today yeah. or as soon as possible because tomorrow isn't guaranteed, especially when you're out here, the violence and, you know, every pill could be your last pill because the dosage is off on those, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a scary lifestyle you're living and you're almost guaranteeing the cycle to continue with your children because you're not helping them, you're not educating them, you're not being that mother mm -hmm. for them right now because you're living the cycle that your parents showed you. And so that's very unfortunate and, and tragic actually because you seem like uh, you love your children but you're just stuck in a rut. You're mm -hmm. stuck in a, a cycle of, uh, you know, a little dead end but you don't know how to get out of. But if you just have confidence in yourself and continue to work hard and just build up the courage to go to treatment. You've already been through through treatment. You've been successful. Yeah. So you're, you're, yeah. you have what it takes. You just have to do it again and stay off and stay clean and go get your children back, okay? Yeah. So, Chris Dalma, thank you for talking, sharing your story. Hopefully this is seen by at least one person out there that you're going to impact their lives going forward, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether that's a parent or a, ch a youngster, young person or a young adult. Uh, your story has a power to impact them, okay, in a positive way. So, Crystal, thank you very much. Good luck, and uh, we'll stay in contact, okay? All right.